Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know that with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you have crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The Word of the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my son.
from the first epistle of St. Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially, according to their needs, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with the perishable things like silver or gold, but the precious blood of Christ, like that of the Lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, that you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish are you, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they were coming near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. This is Father Paul. I'm speaking from our beach house in Grapeview, Washington. Uh, Judy and I have been spending most of our time out here these past few weeks. We are both doing fine and staying well. And like all of you, we are looking forward to getting back to church at St. Mary's one of these Sundays before too long. I want to begin this morning by offering our traditional Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Wow. It feels good to say those words out loud. And it is good to be with you this morning via the gift of technology. How amazing it is that we are able to stay connected as a community during this time. Many thanks to St. Mary's staff and to the vestry for making these connections possible. I want to share some thoughts this morning about the Lent and Easter seasons we have been going through this year. How amazing that the global pandemic has almost exactly coincided with these two great sacred seasons. These have been Lent and Easter like we have never experienced before. For example, a Lutheran pastor friend of my, 
of mine once said recently that he dreamed, never dreamed that he would be telling people to stay home from church. And as presiding Bishop Curry said in his Easter homily, it may not look like Easter, it may not smell like Easter, it may not feel like Easter, but it's Easter anyway. Christ is risen indeed anyway. I have been reflecting quite a bit the past couple of months on how the pandemic has been affecting our lives and our world, and will likely continue to do so for years to come. Way, one way to think about the pandemic is to see it as a global wake-up call, a profound time for everyone to reflect upon how we are living our lives. As Pope Francis put it a couple weeks ago, to sort out what really matters. We're being called to think about what really matters and to let go of things that don't really matter. Another way to think about this is to describe it as a time of profound spiritual awakening. Father Richard Rohr, a Franciscan priest, one of my theological heroes, says that spiritual growth tends to happen through two human experiences. The first is through the experience of great love, and the second is through the experience of great suffering. Both of these shake us up and move our souls into deeper spiritual awareness. For example, I think most of us will never forget the times we have fallen in love with someone or when we have experienced God's deep love for us in a personal way. And we will never forget our times of deep suffering, sorrow, loss, and grief. These kinds of experiences touch us and change us forever. We see this happening in today's Gospel reading. It is the beloved story of Jesus walking with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We notice in the story that the risen Jesus mysteriously comes to walk alongside the two disciples on the road without being recognized. He kind of sneaks up on them and begins to listen in on their conversation. Jesus meets them where they are. He meets them in their grief, their sadness, shock, and confusion. Like a good pastor or a counselor, he listens to their stories. Walking along the road, Cleopas and the other disciple don't recognize that it is Jesus who is walking with them. But when they invite the stranger to stay with them for evening as at hand, an Easter miracle happens. When Jesus breaks the bread at supper, their eyes were opened, and they recognize their mysterious companion is Jesus, apparently alive and risen from the dead. And then Jesus mysteriously vanishes from their sight. The Easter story is a story of great suffering and great love. It is a story how love is stronger than death, how love endures and never ends. It is a story of profound spiritual awakening on the part of the disciples and how they come to Easter faith. Now I think that is what is happening to us through this Lent and Easter time. Through great suffering and through great love, we are participating in a spiritual awakening, an awakening that's taking place both on the individual and collective levels. The awakening is so profound that it has thrust us into a time of great uncertainty. We have moved into a cloud of unknowing. Life has changed, and we know, don't know what the future will bring. Here are some questions that I've been wrestling with these past few weeks. How are my eyes being opened? What am I really seeing? What lessons am I learning through this pandemic? What are we seeing through the lens of this crisis? What is calling us to be, God calling us to be and to become? And I know that you are wrestling with similar questions yourselves. Wrestling with questions is good. It is an important part of the process of spiritual growth. If we don't ask new questions, 
we will never come up with new answers. Early on in the pandemic, when the stay-at-home home guidelines were issued, my spiritual director suggested that I start a daily practice of writing down my feelings in a journal, something I'd never done before. And what I've been doing is pausing, breathing, putting my hand on my heart, and then tuning in to what I'm feeling at that particular time that day. This practice takes about three minutes. After tuning into my feelings, I've been writing down words which describe my experience. What I'm discovering is these words really do reflect what I'm experiencing during the pandemic. They are a kind of a log, a true journal of my experience. Now, some of the words are pretty negative and describe painful emotions, but many of the words are hopeful and even inspiring. There seems to be a yin-yang to the words I'm coming up with. Now, I'm going to read a few words from my list that are guiding me through this pandemic. I would even say that they are inspiring me to envision the kind of life I would like to live once we get through these hardest days of the crisis. And I invite you to do the same, to try this exercise. Write down the words that describe your feelings these days and also include the words that inspire you to envision a brighter present, and a brighter future. Here are a few words from my growing list. Vulnerability, fear, anxiety, uncertainty, interconnectedness, compassion, hope, love, trust, essential workers, sacrifice, service, generosity, community, science and scientists, facts, not fear, consumerism, sustainability, family, prayer, poverty, racism, social justice, political action, care of the earth, healthcare disparity, and income inequality. These are just some of my words, and they are powerful words. They are words which describe our experience, or at least my experience, my growing awareness. They help open my eyes to see the risen Christ, what he is doing through this pandemic. Many of them are words which inspire and help envision the kind of life I believe God is calling to me, me to live. Now I'm curious what your list of words might be. And if we were in church on this Sunday morning, I would ask you to speak your words out loud. But I invite you to try this spiritual exercise. Tune into your feelings, place your hand on your heart, and come up with your own list of words. Write the words down. Inscribe them upon your heart and upon your mind. Let them remind you of what you are going through and what we are going through. Reflect upon these words and let them inspire you to new resurrection life in Christ. Finally, stay home, stay healthy, trust God's guidance, love, and care, and may God bless us all always. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through resurrection from the dead, God has given us new birth. Let us offer prayers to God for the living hope of all the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding bishop, Michael, our diocesan bishop, Greg, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for the leaders of our nation, state, and city. Pray for those who are trapped by closed borders and shelter-in-place orders. Pray for good health care and economic policies. Pray for peace and justice. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for all who are refugees. Pray for all who live in war zones. Pray for all who are unemployed or homeless. Pray for all who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for the sick and their families, for all who work in the medical field and all first responders. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray for those who despair at life in the current situation that faces our world. Pray for children who cannot understand why their world seems to have turned on its head. Pray for all who feel lost and hopeless. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed and for all who mourn, mourn a loss. Pray for all who have been lost in the pandemic and for their families. Pray for those who have died from other causes, but whose loss is felt just as heavily. Pray for those who have died and those who love them. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who gives us eternal peace through Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, which we offer in the hope of glory, and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share together a sign of peace. Okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And we miss you all. And life is good. Be safe. And we hope you're all healthy. Be with you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marian Stinson. I am the priest in charge here at St. Mary's. Probably most of you know me. But if you happen to be new, welcome. And if you'd like to know more information about us, the best place to check us out is via the website, St. Mary's Episcopal Church, Lakewood, Washington. These are indeed unusual times, but it is a time when the church is indeed alive and well. And we continue our work being the body of Christ within this community. It is a time when we need to reach out and be present to each other. We may be physically distancing, but we are not socially isolating. And indeed, the arms and the love of God continues on. There is much going on during the week. As you know, there are classes um, via Zoom. The best place, to again, to check those out are via parish posts or on the website. They include Bible study and contemplative prayer and a group called Finding God in the Midst of the Pandemic and a class, um, which this week actually will be a book study. So if you're interested in that, do check those out, um, as I said, via Parish Post or the website. Other things that are going on, there has been a wonderful group that has been making masks um, that we have both contributed to St. Clair's. Um, but also we have masks available if you are interested in getting one. Um, do call us and we'll figure out a way to get one out to you. Thanks for all of those people who have the talent and the skill to um, sew, because it is indeed not my skill, <laughs> but I recognize it in other people. So this is a time when we are beginning to think about what it would mean to reopen the church, um, which is both exciting as well as um, a little labor intensive in terms of trying to figure out those details. We will not be doing that on a, alone. We will be doing it as the governor instructs, um, as well as under the tutelage of the bishop and the diocese. So, but it, we are beginning to have the conversation, which is indeed exciting. Thank you to all of you who have written us lovely notes of support and encouragement. Um, we value them, and um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. I also thank you for your financial support of the parish. The work does continue, and we are also supporting the work of the food bank, um, which, as you can guess, is providing a uh, great need within the community because there is a lot of need and both now and and will be in the future so if you're interested in supporting the work of the food bank best way to do that is to write a check out to the church and put in the corner uh, or in the memo line discretionary fund and that money goes directly to them so as disruptive as this time is god is still with us god is still guiding us and out of this confusion, I'm sure, will eventually come clarity, agility, and an opportunity to deepen our love, not only for one another, but for the community around us. So take care, my friends. God bless. And I will see you soon. Bye. Happy birthday, George. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And many more. What am I supposed to say? Well, how old are you? I'm 87. And what was your great birthday advice or advice in general? Life in general is to do whatever your wife tells you to do. All right. And what's the best and worst thing about having a birthday during a pandemic? Oh, well, there's no family involved and no party. Okay, the best thing? That's, well, the best thing is that we'll do it later. There you go. All right, any other great advice? Um, 
No, just be happy. All right, well, happy birthday. Thank you. Watch over, over your, your children, children, O Lord, Lord as their days increase. Bless and guide, guide them, them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given things to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given things, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy things for holy people. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and my body, and with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>